Hey, welcome to your class. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Hello. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. So it's a pleasure to be with you tonight as well. So first thing that we're going to check is, of course, about the platform. So let me just go there. So remember that for tonight, we need to finish, not tonight, but this week, we need to finish the unit two. That is very important. And also remember that we need to finish the app. Check. We need to finish the midterm test. This thing's kind of crazy tonight. Okay, here's it. So, this is the class of tonight. There is no homework for tonight. So just the class and that's it. Okay. And we are going to check about the attendance as we usually do. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Nájera. Ana Selmi Chévez. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erazo. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Manuel Antonio Palma. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Good evening, teacher. Good. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Good evening, present. Good. Silvia Suleima Rodríguez de González. Present, teacher. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present, teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Arau. And present, good evening. Good evening. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Perfect. Let me just check about the sound, which is not working properly. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay, anyways, we're gonna continue like this. Okay, so we're going to start with a little video. Remember that we were talking about the, uh, the presentation. So we're going to actually make a presentation for this incoming Friday. And of course, the classes, I mean, the words that we're going to check. Uh, before we move into that one, let me just check. Oh, I see your message when you put your head over. Second. Let me see here. Let's see. Okay, uh, I was checking here that the uh, subscription to the next level has started. So we have until the June 12th uh, for you to send all the papers. Okay, I was checking about that one. So it's very important for you to check with your human resources um, department to check 
if they send the papers ready or uh, if there's something missing for them to send the papers so you can start the next module. According to uh, what we have here, we will be starting the class if everybody sends the papers on time uh, on June 19th. Okay, so that is the plan. Let's have everything as well. So please be with your, with your human resources team, okay? So we're going to check about a video as usual. We're going to see the video and then uh, try to comment, try to give an opinion for the video. Okay, here we go. In this video, we're going to look at how you can engage your audience in your presentation. The first step, of course, is to create your content, to know what you want to share. And then the second step is to figure out how to maximize the engagement and interaction between you and your listeners. And we're going to look at six strategies to help move you in that direction. Hello there and welcome back. If this is your first time tuning in to Communication Coach, this channel is here to help people probably like you, rising leaders who want to increase your impact so you can lead the people around you to higher levels of excellence. We're doing a two-part series in how to engage your audience. In this video, we're gonna look at six quick tips. And in the next video, we're going to look at learning style. So make sure that you look for that video. Either I'll link it to a card above and I'll also put it in the description below. So in this video, I want you to look at these six strategies for engaging your audience. Think about which one would be the easiest one for you to use in your very next presentation. So tip number one, ask more questions. Instead of just talking at your audience, you want to create a feeling of a discussion. So you can ask what they call rhetorical questions that you don't need anybody to answer. You just ask the question and they think about it during your pause. Or you can actually ask them to respond. But make sure you ask them a nice easy question, something light. All they have to do is maybe raise their hands or shout out a one or two word response. Nothing too complicated. You want to keep it nice and easy. Another thing that you can do is ask your listeners to do something physical. This is tip number two. Ask them to do something like, hey, I'd like you to take an object out of your pockets, or I would like you to open and flip through a book that you might be looking at. I once saw a speaker, for example, ask everybody to cross their arms. And then once we all had our arms crossed, they talked about comfort and comfort zone a little bit. And then they said, okay, now cross your arms in the opposite direction. And it really helped the speaker make the point because there was a bit of discomfort when you start, you can try it right now. When you switch your arms the opposite way that you're used to folding them, it is a little bit uncomfortable. So it really drove home the speaker's point, but by having us do something physical, it made it that much more powerful. The third tip is to give your listeners something to react to. So it's not just you as a speaker and your listeners. Maybe you put up a relevant quotation or image on a slide and then you ask them to react to it in some way, like by asking them a question or in some other way. That is much more dynamic than just you and your listeners. Now it's a third part of the puzzle that they're reacting to, stimulus response. That'll usually get people thinking and get people talking. The fourth way to get people more engaged is to ask a volunteer from your audience to come up on the platform or the stage up to the front and do something with you, demonstrate something with you. And what happens when you bring a volunteer up is the li other listeners put themselves in the volunteer's place. And so they're much more likely to relate to it and they find it much more engaging and entertaining. For example, I teach college and at the beginning of every semester, almost every course, I teach students how to shake hands professionally. And I bring up a volunteer and they're laughing, they're engaging because they can see themselves in the volunteer's spot and they all get better handshakes and they do a better job. And then we have them practice it more as a group as well. You can ask them again to do something physically later, but just bringing the volunteer up is another technique that you can use to get people more engaged. The fifth tip is to use a real object, some kind of prop, instead of just simply the PowerPoint slides. So for example, if I'm talking about camera lenses, I want to have a real object, a real prop. Real camera lens is way more engaging than a picture, for example, of a camera lens up on the PowerPoint. And if you've ever flown on a plane, you know this. When the flight attendant is demonstrating how to buckle the seat belts, they use the actual object, which is much more interesting to look at 
then let's say that little pamphlet they put about the seatbelts in the seat pocket in front of you. I don't look at that pamphlet, but I do look at the person with the object. And I always find it a little interesting how they handle that seatbelt because it's a real object, much more realistic and interesting than a simple image. And the last tip, the sixth tip, is that you can be the prop. Your physical body can be a way to engage your listeners. So the way you gesture, the way you come alive, the way you move around your speaking area. You might even go a little bit into your audience, like up an aisle for a little bit. That's way more engaging than just standing still in one place the whole time. Now you have to be careful. You don't want to move for no reason. You don't want to pace like you're nervous. You have to move with a purpose, but when you move with a purpose, it's much more likely to bring people into the interaction, get them much more excited. So those are my six quick tips on how to engage your audiences more effectively in a presentation. Just wanted to remind you there is another video right after this in the card above here or in a link in the description below about how to use learning styles as a schema for interacting with your audience in a more dynamic way. So thanks, God bless, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, perfect. So what did you get from the video? Uh, the, the physical expression, uh, for example, arms, uh, cross, cross arms of the audience is Uncomfort. Un Uncomfort? Make a Not comfort. Not mm -hmm. comfort. Uh, it is important to see the expression of the audience in, in all, uh, in all meaning or in all. Yeah, meaning. Okay, very good. So yeah, for the presentation, there are some things that we need to be careful about, right? So there are things that uh, if you do the right way, uh, it's going to impact positive to to the audience. So that will be it. Uh, any other comments or opinion? He um speak um um six tips that you take in for engage an audience in a presentation. And the first is ask more questions and you can ask questions with audience and they respond, answer. And number two is ask your audience do something physical, for example, I don't know. Who is I? I don't care very well. This then number three, ask them to react to something. Uh, I don't know. For example, I can say take two applause. I don't know how to say applause. 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 Uh, you can. Uh, uh, anyway, and reaction for take attention the people uh, or their number four in be the volunteer mm, because always are people that mm, mm, they when participate uh, in other is a uh, use an object as a prop and the last one use your body moment, mo movement in in around in the auditor for example Hello. very good perfect so nice tips right uh, of course that depends uh, if you are in front of people or if you are uh, in a video conference depends on the kind of presentation but I believe that in general there are very good tips that we can follow whenever we are going to present any other comments or opinion? I think that there are good, good uh, tips uh, for a 
presentation to engage the the public. I like uh, I like the uh, the tip that use a prop object. I think that uh, it's true. Uh, mm, if you are uh, talking about a product, people uh, can be more um, in expectation if you have a, a real object and maybe pass to all the public to to look at because uh, sometimes uh, on the speak or on in a visual in a visual diapositiva slide uh, slide slide in a visual slide sometimes you say mm, you want to you want in the, in, the, in that moment you want to see a, a real object i think it it passed to me once I, I i remember in a presentation they were talking about something and i say mm, i would like to i would like to have the object in real i think that uh, that are, are very interesting that he gave us okay very good so that is it yeah nice thing sometimes little things make the difference right sometimes details the way that you speak, the way that you present something, as you say, for example, if you have the chance to bring something that is actually real to the presentation, maybe pass it to the people, I mean, and they are able to see, I mean, it's going to do a positive impact and they are going to discuss about that one and live the experience in a different way. So little details, little things sometimes are the ones that make everything different, right? Good, mm -hmm. good. Teacher, uh, these tips, for example, in my job, uh, we enjoy in um, popular education, and we have a dynamic and activity called um, the child burning, and all the people take up, up standard. It is an example. Yeah, that is it. I mean. Uh, sometimes there are some dynamics within the activities that also impacts you, right? For example, if you are presenting about teamwork, there are a lot of dynamics that you can do so they can stand up and, and achieve something. If you challenge them, you, they are going to react and they are going to work as a team. So, and you have fun and you discuss about that one. I mean, it's something that you put together. So. Good, good. So let me check. We are going to see a second video. This one is also about some things that we we do. Let me just check and put that out. Here we go. Hello, hello. I am super excited to have you here. In this video, I'll be sharing three common virtual presentation mistakes. Let's dive in. Mistake number one can seriously kill your presentation. You can get away with this when you speak in person, but you absolutely cannot get away with this when you deliver a virtual presentation. Mistake number one is making no effort to engage with your audience. I know we're all still getting used to the idea of virtual presentations and appearing on camera. I know it can be hard to engage with your audience if over 90% of your audience has their cameras turned off. But I also know that if you choose not to make eye contact with your virtual audience and you don't ask them any questions to make your virtual presentation more interactive, your virtual presentation will feel somewhat incomplete to your audience regardless of whether your audience has their cameras turned on or turned off, try your best to approach your virtual presentation with the same enthusiasm that you would like to see in a super interesting conversation. And your audience will thank you later. Mistake number two is pretty much in line with mistake number one. And that is using your virtual presentation time to deliver information only. 
I think we can all agree that now that most of the world is working, studying, or simply hanging around online, there's a little bit too much information out there, meaning it's harder to capture and keep the attention of an online audience. So when you choose to deliver information in batches without any stories or any interactive elements attached to it, in my view, that's a recipe for a boring presentation. There is nothing wrong with delivering an informative presentation. Just make sure that you mix and you match the information to relevant stories and interactive activities. When you decide to add stories and interactive activities to your virtual presentation, you're in a much stronger position to influence and to inspire your audience, not only to digest your message, but to also take one action step. The third common virtual presentation mistake that I've seen is rushing to close. Don't get me wrong, I get that you probably need to hop off to another meeting. Maybe you have something else that's scheduled after this virtual presentation, or you simply had enough screen time for the day. What if I said, thank you so much for watching. Thanks so much for being here. That's all we have time for today. Wouldn't you feel misled or maybe disappointed? Of course you would. And that's exactly how your audience feels whenever you rush to close a virtual presentation. Remember your time, keep track of time so you can pace yourself accordingly. Because rushing to close can make your audience feel unimportant. It leaves them feeling like you prefer to be somewhere else or with someone else. And no one really likes to feel unimportant, right? I'm all about improving my public speaking skills. That's why I've created this quiz to help you figure out if there's any room to improve. I scored 19 points out of 21, and you can find out how many points you'll score by clicking on the link to the quiz on the description box below. Wherever you are on your public speaking journey right now, I think it's good practice to understand where you are right now and if there's any room to improve your technique. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, share with a friend, and hit that like button so I can continue making more videos like this just for you. Have an amazing day and I'll see you on the next one. The books. Okay, so what did you get from this video? She say, uh, it, it's some mistake uh, for his uh, presentation in, in virtual. Um, it's a tip, uh, one uh, is a off, off, no, off, no, no off the camera, camera. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a uh, important, it's a, uh, uh, in virtual, it's a, uh, uh, how do you say, Contact. 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 Okay. Thanks. It's a contact with a uh, uh, the person. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's a piece of tip. It's a. It's an oil. It's a, a expression. The. Oh, oh, that. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Thank you. So yeah, sometimes we make some mistakes, right? Because. For well, many reasons. I mean, sometimes we don't deliver presentations that much, or sometimes uh, we don't have the experience. But little by little, we need to to check into those and also avoid doing that. Any other comments? Uh, teacher, uh, good evening. Good evening. The, the, the woman was talking about some mistakes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I remember she mentioned uh, the uh, the how how do you say uh, uh, the what is his name the people uh, that it's a uh, they have the presentation the, the chair, chair the chair, the chair. Huh? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, one important uh, thing for the 
share is to mix information, but uh, different uh, activities to, for example, uh, have a eye contact, eye contact with with the audience, uh, because uh, it's, I, I consider it's, it's normal. Uh, so, so then you when you you saw when you see uh, maybe most of the audience is is uh, their camera turned is their their camera turned on or turned off, but this is a signal that if I am uh, interesting or if for past the moment, for example, maybe I, I am I am honest uh, one one time or one class, maybe for me is uh, no more not so interesting, but it's important to to, to, to have uh, the meeting. Is to, to, to be present, but uh, I consider we mix information and some activities in the moment is important to 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 uh, to to have uh, the the attention of your audience. Okay, very good, perfect. So that is true. I mean, uh, as you remember, always on the first class that we do here. Uh, one of the rules it says that you have to turn on the camera, right? But mm -hmm. it's because of that one. In that way, uh, we have personal contact with the other people and we understand how is everything going. Um, I believe that I have never had a class that everybody has the camera on. I understand that sometimes we're still working or driving home. There are many situations, <clears throat> right? But the optimal way is that. The optimal way is that you are going to open camera and that you are going to be uh, interacting with the other person, right? That is very important because in that way you show that you are engaged, that you are there, and also uh, the presenter can see what's going on with the, with the audience, if I need to change something or if I need to, uh, I don't know, do Make something. About it. Exactly. So that is a very important thing. Uh, probably that sometimes it's not possible for everybody, right? And uh, let's see how it goes. I mean, but that is something that we need to consider when we're going to do a presentation online, right? So it's something very, very perfect. Thank you. And uh, any other comments or opinion? Uh, other mistake in a presentation is when the audience is boring, but um, it's not the same. When you take a presentation with child or with bachelors or your um, homeworks, no, uh, co worker in the work uh, is a different for the level, seriously, no. And sometimes you need a serious. Okay, that is true. That is so right. I mean, yeah, if you're with your friends, uh, I mean, it's totally different than when you're presenting uh, for like a work-related audience or if you're presenting academic things. Many things happen. I know that there are some difficult topics. I mean, uh, it's not the same. In mind that we're speaking up here about the laws and we have to read all the articles of a law. That is different, right? So, yeah, we need to analyze. We need to read a lot. We need to do certain things. But anyways, the presenter has to try, has to try to, to get into motivation for the audience so they are engaged and they understand because the problem is that at the end of the, of the uh, presentation, you need to get the most out of the topic. So uh, that happens. That happens. And uh, it's something that we need to check. And do. So let's see what happens on Friday when you're presenting. That would be interesting. Any other comments or opinion?
Okay, so we are going to read actually about how to engage people to a presentation. So why we need to involve your audience. Listening to a presentation for any length of time can be a difficult process. If you don't involve your audience, they'll start to play with their phones, talk to colleagues, and generally lose track of what you're saying. Once this happens and you start seeing that the audience will rather be somewhere else, you'll start to feel anxious and might try to speed up the presentation. So as you can see, this is a, a team thing, right? I mean, if the audience is not going well, the presenter also is not going well. They see something is going on and they feel anxious. I mean, uh, we also discussed that some people, they, uh, they get nervous. I mean, it's the normal way whenever we are in front of people. And in mind that you're nervous and the people are like, oh, I don't care, right? So yes, that is going to cause any. So it's uh, in both way, communication in both way is a very important thing. So that's what we're gonna read about and think. To engage large audience fully, the presentation needs to be energetic, purposeful and staged. And as it is a direct conversation between both you and your audience. That way they'll absorb your ideas and insights and they'll have learned something in an enjoyable way. So that is it, right? We need to try to do our best so everybody feels fine. And uh, yeah, this is very important to be energetic, to be purposeful, meaning that the, the information has a purpose. I mean, if you start speaking in general and you don't present something relevant, the audience is going to be like, ah, oh, this is not good, right? Okay, so we're going to speak about the plan for the audience perspective. Let's see, we're gonna start with Maria Elena. Could you please have me reading this part? Only give me a minute for my class. Ah, okay, very well. <laughs> no worries. Glasses are important, right? Sometimes, you know, I wear glasses uh, mostly when I'm in front of the TV or the computer. Um, when I'm driving or something like that, I don't use them. But if I have to read, I can't without the glasses. It's not possible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and number one, plan from the audience perspective. Before you start writing your presentation, thinking about these points. What are the most interesting parts of my in my topic? How much let the audience know about the, my topic? The what the level do I target it out it up? Which members of the audience will most likely be disinterested? <laughs> How can I help them learn and understand my topic? What is the size of the audience? Uh, you can do this by researching the event or conference, investigating other speaker at uh, the event, and even contacting organize, organizers. Organizers. Organizers to find out more about the demographic by asking this question about the audience and identify answers. You are starting to think about your audience uh, interests and needs. Remember, the aim is to give the impression that your presentation has been planned according to your audience specific interests. Interesting. Very good. What Interesting. did you uh, thank you? What did you understand on this? Uh, you need to prepare. <laughs> how is your topic? Uh, how you can engage the audience because maybe a big but in this work is the cell phone. I see with my coworkers and the communities in 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 rural communities. You is you, is your enemy enemy number one, and you need to take attention the people.
for um, can understand your topic. Uh, for this, you need a you need take a plan and this part. Uh, speak about this the plan that you can do about your the people. Uh, the people that do uh, presentation, take the presentation or... Okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yes, actually, uh, when you are going to deliver a presentation, it's a matter of time planning, right? I mean, uh, somebody tells you, you are going to do a presentation by next, next week. Of course, you need to start thinking about that one, right you need to start checking on uh, what what you're going to say what is going to be said remember for example that one of the first topic that we checked it was the agenda right for a meeting the same happens here you need to have like an agenda on what you are going to say how it's going to be presented uh, many things many things has to be involved in the planning of the presentation and these are questions that you need to ask yourself. Who is my audience? How much time do I have for this? Uh, how important are these topics? I mean, how can I present this in a very nice way? Things like that are very, very So that is the first thing. Plan from the audience perspective. Okay? In mind that you are going to be there, sit down. So what would you like to listen to learn about this topic? Good. Number two, use an easy to follow structure. Susana Beatriz. Okay. Use an easy to following a structure. When uh, building your presentation, focus on giving on giving it's a structure. A structure which uh, people can easily follow. Start by start by introducing the core concept and goals that then uh, elaborate on the various points in a bit more detail. Draw logical in conclusions and leaving your audience with a clear takeaway messenger. You want to flow naturally from one part uh, to the next, like you are telling a big story, uh, chapter by chapter. Hey, what did you understand on this? Um, and but it's um and with um when when with your presentation um the person and uh, give a uh, or need or need a uh, structure um the the this step. Um, far is a, a what is a introduction is a como is a point a principal point a, in in your in in presentations and um, but it is a is a order uh, but it's a in 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 presentation uh, but it's a but it's a interesting the audience and uh, but it's a no 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 talking is a different different uh, um i don't know teacher <laughs> well actually there is it i mean when you i mean and the first topic is to plan right once you plan what you have to say here is like structure for the presentation so on the first part, I'm going to present this, or, and then this, and then this, and the conclusion, right? So, but it has to be easy to follow. 
something that people are able to understand in a very easy way. Okay, sometimes uh, if it's difficult, you can present images or a video so they understand in different ways. So uh, as I was telling you, not all the topics are presenting the same way. Some topics might be presented in different ways. So we need to be inventive and change some things there. Okay. Very good. Nice. So number three, get the audience immediately involved. Manuel Antonio. Number three, get the audience immediately involved. Your audience will come to your presentation in a range of different moods. Try using a simple icebreaker to re-energize them and get them focused on your presentation. For example, ask people to stand up and introduce themselves to their neighbors or have them identify two or three questions they would like to hear addressed during your presentation. By starting with a nice breaker, you show your audience that your talk will be interactive and require their participation. Okay, what do you get from here? Okay, uh, normally, uh, uh, the presenter have to couch the, the attention of, of their of uh, his audience um, obviously in in every presentation for example uh, maybe uh, every uh, someone said oh my god uh, I think it uh, this this uh, again uh, will boring this presentation I imagine uh, will be boring but uh, maybe but the presenter in, in this uh, uh, tip or receive <laughs> uh, have to involve uh, making some activities like for this example right uh, to create a, a, an environment when people uh, feel that is important as as audience and maybe uh, is is a good is a a good thing to to do that uh, ask ask one or two uh, questions, or for example, tell some uh, someone, uh, please, uh, could you uh, describe yourself, uh, introduce yourself, or what you what is your opinion about this one or about this one? Uh, maybe because this in this way. In my case, is is very important because uh, I feel that I am important. My uh, suggestion is important in the presentation. Involve immediately your audience. Uh, in this in this part is very important to 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 have the attention for the to the audience. Okay, very good. So, yes, um, any presentation that you make, it doesn't matter the topic, people have to be involved. You need to ask questions, opinions, comments, uh, feedback. Uh, even, I mean, when, when you are going to decide together something, that is even more important that everybody participates, right? And sometimes, I mean, you can make them participate in different ways. There are different activities that you can do. Most common is that, what do you think about that one? So, and they can be part of the interaction and they can provide like um, 
very important feedback. So that is something very, very good. Number four, yes, ask, go ahead. But uh, with this great Kaiser, um, you should be as simple because the concentration, the people could be lost. I remember uh, one time uh, some people uh, can use Mentimeter, but with a group of people who were not teach any teach, and it is a, was a chaos because a topic never a topic. The people uh, want to uh, learn about the Mentimeter. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I mean, uh, whenever you are going to do an activity, you need to be careful about that one, right? Because depending on the audience, they can get lost. And it's very difficult sometimes to get them back to the topic, right? So, um, yeah, we need to be careful. It has to be something simple. Uh, I mean, for example, if we are in a room together, you can stand up, stretch yourself, or do one, a physical activity, and then sit down, right? Something like that would be a very good thing. Teacher, yep. Um, very important that depend on the audience, but that the to the the how. Uh, I'm sorry, my connection is not good today. Uh, the the ice break. Uh-huh. A lot of suspense. Yeah, sometimes it the connections. It's not. It's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that happens. You know, I totally understand. So uh, actually, yeah, we lost. <laughs> the connection was was not good. Anyways, yeah, this is a very important part. So, okay, let's go to the next one. Ask the audience questions during your presentation. Yeah, as I was telling you, that is very important. But why, Rosa Elena is going to tell us. Okay, ask the audience questions during your presentation. The audience attention drops to zero after just 10, 15 minutes of your presentation. To get their attention back, take a break from your presentation from time to time and interact with your audience. Ask for the questions and answer, and answer them during your presentation. This will help clear up any confusion the audience might have. When planning your presentation, identify opportunities in your material for your audience to ask questions. If you're not comfortable breaking the flow of your presentation, mention that you'll be taking questions at the end so the audience can prepare some questions. Asking rhetorical questions as you move through your presentations involves your audience by stimulating their own thought process. This technique also helps move between sections of your presentations and is established a clear transition from one point to another. If you're comfortable with taking questions throughout your presentation, use up tools such as Slide, Slide, which allows your audience to ask questions anonymously, anonymously, anonymously. at any time, and not anonymously at any time. So even shy people can participate in the discussion. Very good. What did you understand? Uh, 
the things that you do in the classes. You put a video and you say, anybody have a question? And, and or you you ask questions to the audience. In this case, the person the, the, the person that is presenting and needs to interactive with the with the people because uh, I think in this in this opportunity they maybe they're sleeping and, and if you you have you you give a a certain time uh, to uh, make a question answer and and question uh, the the people uh, can be more engaged with you uh, also uh, he says, even the shy people can participate in the discussion. Maybe nobody talk, and if you do the things uh, and more interactive, uh, also they can participate. I think that is a this is a good part. Not only to speak, 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 speak. No, uh, you need to you need to stop and make questions. Did you understand what you want to know? And that's in that way, the, the public uh, uh, will be engaged. So yeah, that is a, a very good technique, right? I mean, I really like, like to do that one because I mean, yeah, this class is for you to speak, right? To participate, to, to do that one. And reading is one of the best things that I do because I mean, we check vocabulary, pronunciation. Um, everybody can participate. I mean, because sometimes when you speak, you know, when you say who wants to participate, three, four people are the same that are participating. And the rest of the people are just watching. But if I do it like this one, like, okay, now you, now you, now you, that is, is better because we, everybody will participate. So that will be the way. Of course, that depends on the kind of, of presentation that you are going to make sometimes. Uh, if the purpose is a different one, then you can change that one. You can adapt that. Very good. Perfect. And number five, uh, Carla Vasquez. Hi, teacher. Hey. Use a store storytelling to make it more memorable. Since our early ancestral stories have always been a fourth part of human culture and civilization, storytelling is the most universal way to capture your audience's attention, no matter where they are from or what they do for a living. Stories are much more engaging and memorable than lists of facts and figures, but you would think so looking at the majority of presentation, particularly academic ones. People automa automatically tune in when you start telling your story because they want to know what happened next, a popular story storytelling technique in when you present the status quo and they revel and improve part of, of that decor. Uh, think your presentation as one arching narrative as we mentioned earlier, give in the proper structure with a clear beginning, middle, and introduces conflict and provide a powerful resolution that reinforces your key message. Hey, what did you get from this? Um, uh, it's, it's, it's very common to put attention when you explain is is uh, similar to a uh, uh, one story because the public 
put more attention because be, became the story more interesting. Uh, you you need to to do uh, interesting your participation for the for the people put attention in your in your speak up for example or okay. in you, or in the information that you share with your public but the importance here is that you uh, become be, become important your information share yeah that is it i mean uh, storytelling is one of my favorite things also because you can teach vocabulary you can teach many things and also you can share experience right with other people so it can be a real story or you can tell um, a story that you read in a book or something like that uh, and that is going to work very good because then you present a scenario and everybody understand with that uh, what you meant to be so that is a very good thing and when you in a presentation when you really want to touch people sometimes storytelling is amazing you say a story and they get into you so very good mm, let's see the next one says just non-linear presentation software mm, that is a good one uh let's see sylvia suleyma Good evening. Good evening. Six. Just no lin linear presentation software. Instead of flipping through slide after slide, you can show the relationship between your ideas and give your audience the big picture view of your topic. Try letting your audience write the presentation by laying out all of your main points and then let them choose which topics they want to go to. Your audience will get a truly custom presentation based on their interests in interest which they will appreciate and more easily easily remember. Okay. What did you understand on that one? Um, um I understand that uh, For example, when I I use a PowerPoint and slide the presentation, um, I need I need um, write in this slide the main point. I don't know. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, no linear presentation, that means that it's not going to be uh, like in an organized way. So it's going to be organized, but not one after the other one. Sometimes there are some, uh, some platforms that allows you to do that one. I mean, imagine that I have to present mm -hmm. nine topics. So I can... I put a button for the nine topics and then I asked you, hey, which one would you like to check first? So that is a, a very interesting way for this. You're going to say, oh, that topic, the number three is very nice. Click on that one and I'm going to check what is going on there. And all the topics are related, but there is not an organized way. I mean, it's not one, two, three, it's any, any uh, order that you want to ch choose. Depending, of course, on the topic that is going to be possible. Um, sometimes it's impossible, but it's a very interesting and creative way for you to present something. Not slide by slide, but showing the options to the audience and they can choose which topic can do first and then which topic can do later on. So that is a very good thing. 
add a short video. All uh, right, so that is going to be for Wendy Maribel. Okay, all uh, in a short video. Billions of hours of you, you two are consuming each month in advertisers. 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 How, advertisers. How identify videos as having a high retention rate for users. However, very few presentation ever use these videos to engage with their audience. Find a short video clip that reinforces your story or explain a concept better that works can. You can either embed the video directly into your presentation software or include or a link to an external website. Just make sure you test your method on the day of the presentation and have a backup backup on a USB just in case you need it. Okay, what did you understand? <laughs> okay, um, uh, the videos for in, in YouTube, um, explain concepts in words in a short video. So, yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes, as I was telling you before, sometimes it's a very good idea for for the people to understand better to add a short. Uh, for example, you can see that I really like this method because you listen to a different accent, different vocabulary, and you, uh, I mean, all the topics are related to the, to the one that we're presenting. So that is a very good thing. And sometimes people, since that is a different perspective, uh, it's a compliment. So people, they can understand uh, what to do, what not to do, or anything related with the topic that you want. So that is a very good technique as well. And uh, it changes everything. Good. Invite people onto the stage. Okay. Uh, Edwin Alexander. Uh, invite people onto the stage. If you are preparing a particular, particularly long presentation, consider having other people to come on the stage and talk for a bit. This will help you narrate the, the history, history and make the whole presentation more interactive. Steve Jobs never pulled off the entire presentation by himself. He always invited several speakers, including designers, partners, and other executive, executives, executives. To help, executives <laughs> to help him introduce their last product. Of course, this technique should always be arranged with your colleges in advance. Okay, what well, did you understand that? Uh, more or less, teacher, but because I am not, I, I don't belong to this, to this uh item. But what I understand is, um, it's uh, for me, it's like if if you have something in your packet, like when they have someone else who can speak, to, uh, if you are, um. If you need more words or if, if you need to think more in your presentation, uh, invite uh, someone else. It's a very good tip. Like if you uh, 
know if you want to arrange your your presentation more but um it's because I, I as um as a as a driver, I mean, I mean, as a bodyguard, I have I, I have a long time to not be in a presentation or, or things like that. So that's 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 the the thing that I don't have. I don't belong to this uh to this item, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I mean, uh, it's quite simple, right? Sometimes, I mean, you know, uh, maybe we will never be. Uh, there uh, in in person in a class classes in person are totally so because you are there sitting down all the attention is for for the class is very rare maybe you check the cell phone just for a while but uh, everybody's going to be there that makes the class a little bit better because here I I know that sometimes you just turn off the camera and you have to do something else but that that is a it's losing something right. Uh, and it, these activities are possible whenever you are in uh, in-person classes or in-person uh, presentations. You can bring people to uh, to in front of the class to present something, or uh, there are many activities. I remember when I used to to teach only that way. I mean, it was totally different. Sometimes I bring my guitar and we sing a song and we practice English in that way. So there are many things that we used to do. Uh, but here, uh, I mean, it's totally different. Uh, depending on the situation, the audience, the um, the whole thing, we can do one or other thing. Poll the audience. Let's see this one. Susana Hernandez. Mm. Good evening. Hello, Okay, nine. Pull the audience. Pulls are similar to crises that engage the audience during the presentation. Pulls encourage participants to think not only about your questions, but also about their answers. Moreover, like pulls help create mental breaks, so your audience can regain attention and stay focused. The this word teacher. Throughout, 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 the presentation. throughout, hmm? throughout your presentation, by including everyone in answering the question, you also create a group experience that leaves the audience feelings like they all haven't been part of your, part of your presentation. Okay, what did you understand here? I think it's like, um, it's the same when, for example, when you show us a, a video or um, a topic is very interesting and the audience, um, and the audience really pay attention. It's not only the moment, it's a topic you think and you thinking and I think it's important the the way you presentation. Okay, so yeah, Paul, uh, that is a very interesting uh, word. Paul, do you know uh, anybody knows what is the meaning of Paul? Teacher, Paul, Paul is a. Uh, um when you ask uh, the audience or in particular person uh, you ask different questions about that about this about those and what do you think and take for example take note very good that is paul paul the audience means that we're going to evaluate we're going to check what do you think about this and things like that? Were. So that is all the audience. So you send questions to the audience and we start thinking about that one, provide feedback, opinions, comments, and that makes all the class more participant, right? Oh. Good. Uh -huh. Okay, Susana, uh, Susana. 
Okay, use appropriate humor. This is a very interesting word. Check out the pronunciation of that one. Appropriate, right? It's not like in Spanish. It's a little bit different. Let's see. Um, Anna, tell me, is it possible for you? Hi, teacher. Hello? Number 10. Yeah, please. Use appropriate humor. Humor, right, teacher? Yeah, humor. 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 Some of the best speeches and presentations in the world feature plenty of humor. No matter the subject, a great speaker will use natural charisma, humor, and language to convey, convey their points. Um. Combi. So, combi. Combi their points and get the crowd excited about what they are saying. A great example of building rapport with the audience through the use of humor is Barack Obama talking about the government building Irama. Yeah. Another example is when. Morgan Spurlock offers individuals the opportunity to buy the right, the name, his TED talk, a TED talk, which he referenced to a game at the end where he reveal, reveals reveals the title, the title, title. title. The Title. He peep, he peppers, he peppers. Peppers. Sorry, teacher. Peppers. Yeah. He peppers, he peppers the entire presentation with humorous commentary that not the least support his point. Create relevant jokes, jokes, or find a way to bring out the humor in your subject. And your audience will be much more engaged and more likely to remember your words. Perfect, in this, what did you get? In this advice teacher is related to, to create a charismatic um, speaker, charismatic, charismatic speaker. Um, it's very important to uh, transfer the good mood when you uh, are doing a presentation because uh, in, in the case, the humor is important because create a good environment in the audience, more confident more yes more confident and invite to more participation for the audience this is my opinion teacher perfect very good so yes actually that is it uh the the jokes uh, well first of all we need to be careful about what kind of jokes we're going to make right definitely with respect to many other things but just but it's important oh. to to uh, according your person very important to to transfer um, your I to say honest the, the, the your your personality but the, the way the the way honest the a joke is good when you feel comfortable to to share a joke, but uh, in in my case, uh, for me it's complicated to do a good joke. Teacher, I prefer anecdote or the other or the other uh, way to ice break the. But the joke in my case is 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 more complicated. 
that okay, is important yeah. because <laughs> uh, the good speaker uh, during the, the speech include the humor in, in your presentation. Very good. So that is it. I mean, you are so right. Uh, and also that depends on the person, definitely. I mean, some people, for some people, this, uh, even when you are with friends, it's difficult to tell jokes, right? Imagine in, in a presentation, sometimes it's difficult. Uh, so you can use different techniques, the one that is best for you. And this is a very good one. I really like that one. So sometimes you see that I say some jokes, depending on what we're talking about. And uh, as you say, that makes everything more confident, right? Everything is like uh, you will be able then to participate more and provide different approaches. So that is a very good thing. Very good. Thank you. Practice your delivery again and again. That is going to be for Walter Mauricio. Okay. Uh, the practice your delivery again and again. In practicing is the most important part of delivering an interactive presentation. And you are need to practice for it to use it if you like wise when to accept question. Which point to Empathizing the body language, emphasizing why body with body language, and many more. There are several options for practice. Practice, practice. presentation skill. Improve your public speaking and presentation skill by practicing them in relating environment with auto, automator automated on performance in front of mirror grid for seeing and improving your body length wherever it can be distancing to what you are to what you are saying to frame or colleagues uh use yourself food useful way to thoughtful a thoughtful way to get a feather batch on your presentation try and action the feather batch it's try the way to improve in oil you can also give the person some key areas to focus your feather batch or if you are believing you are a worker in those areas. Victor reality practices is in a public speaking environment, whether it be a virtual conference room or bathroom. Receive very much on your speed with boy analyzing technology. Hey, what did you understand on this one? Okay. The practice you are delivering rights then uh, is the most important. Uh, uh, a different opinion of the people. The question is they ask a question negative or, or positive. It's a uh, 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 Analysis the the points uh, the <clears throat> okay very good so that is it I mean practice is very important if you are not um. If you don't do presentation that very much, definitely that is something that you need to do, right? To practice, to check the way that you say things. And sometimes it's going to be very good because you will be able to change things uh, so everything goes better. So that is a very good thing for you to improve that one. 
try and relate to the audience. Adriana, Stephanie. Not possible. Let me just check them. Maria Elena. Try and relate to the audience. Make comparison to events from everyday life that most people are more are more that familiar with by making things look simple not only will you help your audience get a better understanding of the subject by in, enabling enabling them to visualize the visualize. visualize the information more clearly you will also draw a connection between you. Between you. <laughs> After all, you're all just regular people with a similar experience. Uh, you must happen to be performing different roles at the moment. Okay, what well, did you understand on this? Um, when you use... Um, Metaphor or metaphor, uh -huh. or you using someone, the people experience and your life is in refer and, and refer the, the topic is most early the people understand uh, something. Uh, for example, with the new law, uh, it's difficult because. Uh, take a many articles and is um, hard and boring. But, but if you um, answer uh, for a, um, no sé cómo se dice caso. Case. <laughs> a, real, case a real life case, um, the people understand and it's more easy to explain. Very good, that is excellent. So. Uh, that is what happens. I mean, when you are speaking, depending on the topic that you are saying, you can relate that to the audience. So for example, if we're speaking about security in the country, we can say, have you ever been assaulted? Have you ever seen uh, dangerous situation, people that are dangerous? Or what would you do if you have in that situation? So, And then you start relating their experiences to the topic that we're going to discuss. That way is going to be... Uh, very good way for you to to improve things here so mm -hmm. nice okay strong body language position posture and gestures are important manuel antonio strong body language position posture and gesture Nonverbal communication plays a large part in how we construct meaning. So it makes sense to consider how to use it in your presentation. You can make things more interesting for your audience by using your body language to enhance what you are saying. Body language goes beyond reinforcing your messaging. It's useful from a biological standpoint, as discussed in her body language. T E D talk. Amy Cody's research found that using assertive body language release testosterone and reduce cortisol in both men and women thereby increasing confidence and decreasing stress. And effective presenters pay pays close attention to the physical relationship with her his audience. If you stand hiding behind an overhead projector or stand too far away from your audience, they will not develop a bond with you 
and this will limit the effectiveness of your presentation. Good, what did you understand that? Okay, uh, I think uh, for the presenters it's important to uh, be, be confident. First, firstly, be confident that uh, he or she uh, deliver for the audience. Now, now the the topics and the the body language is, is important uh, because I was. Uh, I was uh, seeing a period that uh, that give advice when you when you are uh, when you, when you are talking uh, in public or presentation or uh, in front of a camera you know of of behind the projector but the presenters need to 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 have a strong body language it's mean the you 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 can you can use your hands the gestures and the posture because uh, i don't i don't i don't have to in my in my in my body uh, i need to to be in uh, I, I need to, to, to have a good posture. If I if I am uh, sit, well, I need to be confident. If I need to to to, to move around the, the public or in front of them, uh, I need to be uh, confident and I, I I have to I I have to I need to have a good posture. This is body language and my gesture said more of me. If I am confident of if I I am now the the topics, it's important. Very good. So that is it. I mean, uh, it's not only the way that you speak and the words that you say. The body language when you are yes. presenting is 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 important. Uh, and actually it's going to reflect that uh, in your voice. I mean, if I'm just like this and I'm just speaking, you will notice, right? You will say, uh, I don't know, something's going on. But if you start moving, if you yes. uh, do some things with your face, if you smile, for example, even if you're not speaking with me or you're not seeing me, you will be able to, to identify my, my humor my tone of voice. So that is a very important. Teacher, in this part, um, mm -hmm. sometimes the people tell you, how do you think, uh, how do you move? But in the moment, in my case, I forget. I forget. Um, I'm, I feel very nervous. Really? And, <laughs> and the people, I think the people is a, a consejo. Advice. Okay, the people told you advice, but I forget it. I forget. So you get very nervous when you are going to do a presentation. Sometimes. Okay. Um, it happened when I am not prepared with the topic. Oh, yeah, definitely. That is something that will impact. Because, I mean, that happens. Sometimes they say, okay, she's going to tell you about this because they know. But it's not just like that one. Right? We need to prepare. So depending on the audience and things. But, but what happens, let me ask you, I mean, you are nervous at the beginning of the uh, presentation, but what happens when you start speaking? Uh, so the nerves decrease when you're speaking through time? Oh, it happens. Will the time happen? Mm -hmm. And I, I, in the ending, I feel the confidence. Exactly. So that that's what happens. So maybe yes, at the beginning, you will be nervous, right? I remember the very first time that I was going to teach English. Uh, I mean, 
you know, I, I guess I told you before, I never went to English classes, never in my life. So I, I said to myself, what am I going to do? I mean, <laughs> I speak, but I just speak. I don't know. Uh, and I had to study and to get ready, prepare. I was nervous and I was checking some other teachers. Um, yeah, the, the, the English classes in person are very nice because you stand up and you do some fun activities and things like that one. So uh, the same happens to me when I was going to teach uh, these classes, for instance, for, through Zoom, uh, because I, I Is it know- It's more easy. It's more easy. Yeah, yeah in, in person it's easier. Go to the whiteboard, uh, write in the book something, uh, it's easier. Here is it's more difficult. It, and it's exactly what it says, this document. I mean, I mean, some people are busy, some people don't feel very well. Some people, they, I know, and maybe you know already, that they turn on the, the, the uh, class and they go, right? And at the end of the class, they come and they turn off that one. So uh, depends on everybody. Uh, but in, in person, it, it, that doesn't happen. I mean, everybody's more involved. So I, I also was nervous about that one. But then I learned. I learned what I had to do. So everybody, all the ones that are interested, get the class the way they, they should be. So time, practice is going to get rid of nervous. Always the first time may be a little bit. I mean, the very first minutes, probably is going to be nervous, but then you are going to be confident again. Teacher. Yep. In this point, I know people uh, who speak uh, with their bodies. And if you tie uh, their hands, you silence them. Um, for example, I remember a teacher uh, when say, ah, run away, oh, fast, fast. <laughs> uh, he used many uh, gestures. Yeah, I mean, that is, as, as we were discussing, it's easy. I mean, for example, one of the most common activities in English classes is that we're going to be in a circle and I'm going to ask a question or I'm going to say, uh, that you are going to participate, and I I uh, throw a ball, and if you get the ball, you need to participate. So that is a very common way, right? But here, I mean, it's not possible, right? <laughs> okay, maintain eye contact with all sections of the audience. Rosa Elena. Okay. Maintain eye contact with all sections of the audience. Making eye contact is one of the most powerful techniques for involving your audience. If used well, eye contact can serve to make your address much personal and thus more effective. If eye contact is avoided, the presenter can appear to be nervous and unconvincing. It is important to share eye contact with all members of a small audience or all, or all sections of a large audience. Avoid making eye contact with just the people you know, taking particular care not to deliver your entire presentation to the person who's assessing your work. Remember that you will need to involve the whole audience if you are to make an effective presentation. If you are nervous, eye contact can be very difficult to establish and maintain, to establish and maintain. Remember that some eye contact is, bet is better than no, and that you should try to build your confidence over time. Hey, what do you get here? Yeah. Uh, we need to, <laughs> we need to make contact with the audience and not look in the eye. The sky and look at the window. <laughs> uh, you need to to make contact uh, with the audience. No, not only in one person, and I think in all the audience. Sometimes maybe, uh, for example, I remember when we spoke at the university. Oh my God! Looking all the people get nervous, and 
And I say, oh, I prefer look into the ceiling. <laughs> Imagine, <laughs> no, because look at the people. Uh, you get nervous, but in this in this time, you need to make an eye contact because uh, you transmit maybe that you are secure that the things that you are talking. I don't know. Uh, but eye contact is important. Definitely, that is very important in any conversation, not only in presentation. So, but in presentation, what uh, we recommend always is to make eye contact and then change to other people. Right, go from one side to the other one and then to the back. So try to involve everybody in class. That is a very important part. So, uh, and yes, everything is. Very Okay, so uh, we and check now, out. Uh, sorry, teacher. And now there are different ways to to present uh, a speech. For example, different format. For example, the tech talk. Uh, it has a specific way. The structure, the tech talk, more. Um, more uh, conversation, but, but conversation uh, relaxing, R relaxing, but the specific objective about the specific topic and the tech talk. And for example, the monologue is the other way um, you the, the inter interaction with the the audience is different. It's different, but it's interesting that now there are a lot of um, format format related to the the presentation. How do you say in English conversatorios? Mm, there is a word for that one. Let me think. Mm. There was a word for that one, because it's not a talk. Uh, yes, it's the other format. Uh -huh. But it's common in the university that the, uh, uh, the, the format is conversatorial. I don't know what is the, the word in English. Okay. But the format is totally different to the I believe is panel discussion. It could be something like that, panel discussion. Like a yes. conversation? Like a conversation. Yeah, I mean, uh, as Anna Sami says, I mean, technology nowadays, uh, it can help you doing things in different ways, right? For example, nowadays it's possible uh, to have a video conference with some people in China and you will see uh, immediately the the uh, translation so that was something that in the past only in movies happened but nowadays it's possible right you can go to other country with that little app and you understand everybody and you can you can do many things right so it, there are many things that we can do and there are many tips there are many situations uh the good uh, or the most important part here is that when you do a presentation well, first of all, you need to be effective. You are going to present something, a topic, and people they need to understand, right? They need to to say at the end of the of the presentation, yes, that's what we're going to do, okay? And go and move. That is the most important. There are many techniques. There are many ways. Uh, everybody is different, so we say that before. And uh, there are many things that you can do. So I'm looking forward to see your presentations this Friday. Ah, that is amazing. Okay, let's do a, a little activity tonight because we were speaking about some activities. So let's see how it goes. I believe that just a few people cannot participate as I was checking. I guess Gloria is not possible. Adriana, I, I guess it's not possible. I don't know if my bay for my bay is possible. Is it possible for you, my bay? Maybe not. Okay, so the rest of the class, I guess we will be able to participate. This is what we are going to do. 
we're going to create a story together, okay? I'm going to be the first one. Let me explain you. I'm going to tell you the first part of the story. And then I'm going to say the name of one of you. And you are going to continue. A little bit. And then you are going to say the name of other person. Okay? And that's the way that it's going to happen. Okay? We can participate two or three times, whatever you want. And then, I mean... Let's see what happens uh, at the end. I'm going to tell you, okay, you are the last one and you are going to finish the story. Of course, this is in English. So, do you have any questions on the activity that we're going to make? No, teacher. Ah, uh, let's see what happens. Let me think the story, okay? So, here we go. I'm going to be the first one. So, once upon a time, there was this little girl that had a very nice pet. The pet she had was a beautiful pink dragon, very big. She lived in a nice castle with two sisters and a magician, Manuel Anton. Okay. Uh, this, uh, this girl, uh, it was a beautiful, was a beautiful princess, and she had uh, her father and he, her mother. Um, moreover, he had uh, three brothers. And he had a good idea with how to how to go out with her pet, and he she doesn't uh, she don't don't she don't want their parent their fa parent to know this act okay. who's next uh, rosa elena okay the princess was afraid to went out with her dragon because the dragon uh, eats so much and Maybe uh, if she went out with him, uh, maybe he he wants to eat everything that he watched in the in the street. Maybe the people scared, uh, but uh, she was uh, made it up, made it, made it, made it up something that he can she can do. Uh, to take out the dragon and um, take with her a big bag of food. Uh, okay, next, <laughs> Marielena. <laughs> it's a difficult history. Um, well, break a history, but uh, one day, the princess broke her dress and put some jeans and to decide fly around the world around the world with the dragon. <laughs> and the next is I don't know, Carla Vasquez. Okay. <laughs> okay. The princess is um is a castle guarded by the dragon. She wants to escape uh, to go the forest for a breakfast because there is a there is a, um there is a good restaurant in a central rest uh, forest. <laughs> hey, who's next? 
Eh, eh, let me see, teacher. Eh, Ana Selmi. Okay. Um, the dragon is very big, pues, and, but his appearance, the dragon is rude, but really, the dragon is very kind, is char charm, and very, very nice. And uh, the dragon is brave. He, he is a pro he protect to princess. Okay. Yes. Um, Who's next? Uh, Edwin. Edwin. Uh, the princess, one day, she went to the forest with his dragon. Sobrino. But um, when he returned, the dragon lost on the forest. So she was crying and she was very sad because he lost his dragon. So uh, the queen offered a reward to the people, to the town of the people, and the, and the queen said, the people who find the dragon to my, my to my baby, I offer a big reward. So everyone in the town start looking his dragon, but never found him. So the princess were he, she was very sad and trying to find to find his dragon. He went to another town, and then she found the dragon. And she was very happy. Next, let me see, Susana. Susana. When passed the time, they found the dragon. The little dragon was sick. And the princess, they went to Chivo Pet. <laughs> it's very difficult because the people have afraid. And a doctor give medicine. And the dragon was more happy, like us. Good, who's next? I don't know, Wendy? Wendy. <laughs> okay. Uh, dragon, dragon girl or, or boy? No, uh, a dragon boy or girl. And come back at forest in in the in the year back the castle with a uh, baby dragon okay uh, so now we're going to finish who wants to be who is the next wendy that is going to finish the story Okay. Who who knows? May you choose. Who? May maybe the Calderon. I, I guess she's I don't know if she's uh, available no, right now. No, okay. Who Rosa, Cynthia, Adriana. Adriana, I don't know if she's available. Adriana, are you there? No. No, no she's not. Uh -huh. Okay. I don't know. Carla Vasquez. Carla Vasquez. Okay. She's going to finish the story. <laughs> Oh, she's thinking. <laughs> Miss Diana's story.
I'm sorry, teacher. I talked to my off microphone. Okay. Uh, okay. They, <laughs> the princess come back to the forest because she want to dinner scramble egg with beans. She because uh, uh, she enjoy her dinner with her uh, her dragon baby. <laughs> Okay, very good. And I guess they live uh, happy ever after. Uh, yes. <laughs> she was happy. <laughs> okay, very good. So you can see uh, here, I mean, we improvise. And everybody made a little presentation about the same topic, right? Different ways, different things. Some of you made jokes. Some of you made very formal thing. And that represents our personality as well, right? This was just a little game. Uh, for you to check into that one. And you can see that, I mean, even when you're not prepared, you can do a presentation, right? And we can do a presentation together as well. Sometimes, I mean, it's more difficult when, in mind that I've say, you are going to say story, Rosalena, uh, the whole story, I mean, maybe it's not good, but in a teamwork, well, that changes. So we need to involve all the people into, uh, into the presentation and it's going to be easier, funnier, and uh, I guess that maybe if you were sleeping at this moment, you you are not sleeping anymore. Right? You need to pay attention. I mean, because you need to know what the other person says so you can continue the story. Many things happen here in this little dynamic. So um, very good, very good. I'm very nice about this one. So do you have any questions about the class of tonight? No. It no was question. it was the interesting. homework of, of Friday, only presentation of topic. Yeah, presentation of any and the, topic. And the three words. And the three words that you are going to That's present. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay, perfect. Teacher, so yeah, go ahead. Uh with the old history, I can only I don't only Thinking about salary, could say is a couch. <laughs> yeah, I remember something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are very good things. I, I mean, if you want to practice, that is another exercise that you can write stories, uh, real stories. Uh, I mean, any any kind of story. So that is a very good practice. And also, you are going to, uh, I mean, that is going to ease your mind from the stress of every day. It's going to be a very good exercise for you. Yes, teacher, did. they live happy forever. Yeah. Forever and ever. <laughs> yeah, like real life. <laughs> okay, very good. So we're going to check about the attendance. And remember uh, that we have to ask our human resource department uh, to send the papers this week, so we have until June 12th uh, for them to send the paper so we can continue with the classes, all right? And the 101 of tonight is for Manuel Antonio Palma. So let's see, Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Alejandra Michelle Hueso Najera. Ana Sermi Chévez. Present teacher. Bye. Good. Bye. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erazo. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Aldamez. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. Good. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate. Present. Ah, ok. <ríe> Mario Ernesto Villeda. Present. Perfecto, María Elena. Rosa Elena Salgado de Salam. Present. Good. Silvia Soleima Rodríguez de González. Present. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present. Good night. Good, Good night. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. 
present. Good night, everybody. Good night. Walter Mauricio Morales Arau. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a wonderful night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow. Dream in English. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Night. Dream. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Okay, hello, Manuel. How are you? Hello. I'm fine, teacher. Yes. Oh, nice. How is your arm? Is it getting better? Ah, okay. Y yes, teacher. Uh, little by little. <laughs> okay, very good. Yes. So I guess that was a very wild fight. No, teacher. <laughs> it's a joke. Football. Yeah, yes, yes. yes <laughs> I was playing football, but it, I got a, a difficult situation, but I don't. I didn't expect, but it's a part of because you know football is 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 a uh with with contact. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. That is. Uh, I I remember uh, one year uh, one years ago. I I have a I have a down in my my motorcycle, and I uh, I have a. a uh, a little pain in my uh, in Spanish we call muñeca, mm -hmm. but in term or in medical term is the carpo. But past the the, the the time past the time, but I I uh, I with the with the time I I, I felt better. Okay. But in this, in this, in this, in this, uh, in, in in this time, yes, I I I I cause a serious damage in my in my car. Yes, the, the doctor had to to practice a surgery. Yeah, that was hard. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, I feel you feel better very soon. Thank you, teacher. Thanks. Okay. Okay, you have experience in the one-on-one. -on -one, so the first question that I want to ask you is, how do you feel that you are moving on? Do you feel that you are learning, that you are getting something? Uh, yeah, teacher, for sure. Uh, I, I I feel good with this, uh, the, with this class because in the previous, in the next, no, in the, uh, how would you say, in the module, Anterior. In the previous model, you can say. Okay. In the previous model, I suggest some uh, some case that I I, I I I didn't feel well for this, for those, for that. And but in this in this in this model, I'm okay. Yes, I I, I I'm glad because uh, I I I feel that I am. Uh, in uh, I I am advanced little by little. I remember. Uh, I I I make comparison with when I I was in mid in 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 the the the, the level in the previous level uh, in the immediate uh, I, I, I am afraid to, to speak but uh, in this uh, at this time I think I I, I go I, I'm going to uh, to learn in I, I I felt I feel that I am take advantage for the time and I I uninstall some uh, I don't know uh, 
social media to take advantage for the little time when I, I, when I have free time to, to practice, to seeing a, a video, uh, to read some photographs, because uh, I, I consider uh, I am a little lazy because uh, I need to have a, a, a good technique teacher. Uh, could you give me uh, a good technique that that works in my in my learning teacher? Because I consider this miss. Uh, this is uh, I I need. This is miss. I I to complete my. My interest, my interest to 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 learn in general. Yeah, definitely. So there are many things that you can do, uh, yes. depending on uh, depending on what you want to achieve. The the first that I was telling today was it's very interesting. I mean, you can write stories or you can have a, a journal. You know, uh, so you can write all the activities that you did during the day, every day. So that is something that you can do. It's so in, in English. That is the most important. The most important is thinking in English. That means that in the morning you wake up and you say, what am I going to have for breakfast? Coffee, maybe sweet bread, or what I can have in English everything. If you do it like that, you are going to jump to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, if by any chance you don't find a word, you don't know how to say that word, you go to the dictionary, look for the word, and then you start using the word again. So okay. that is going to be very good. Okay. Uh, in when I when I listen to conversation, only listen teacher, uh, there are many words that I I, I don't understand. Only li listen, right? First. Uh, the second is when I am seeing uh, periods. I, 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 what is the, 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 what is better with closed captions or without? Well, my advice for you is to do it first with no captions. Okay. Okay. So you find an interesting video that is not that long, five, 10 minutes, no captions. You can mm -hmm. play it one, two, three times to try to understand. Uh, Me, okay. Always there are some words that you don't understand. Yes, yes. So then after that one, uh, to see if you understood everything, then you put the captions. And yes. then for first of all, check the whole idea to see if you understood the idea. And then you check the vocabulary and pronunciation of the new words. Yes, yes, because uh, today I I, uh, I was uh, watching a, a, a long video because, but, uh, it was a very interesting, but for the for the the short time I I didn't uh, I didn't uh, see uh, to I didn't see the complete video, but uh, I when but my question is when I I don't understand. A war, even seeing a closed caption, because people talking uh, so so fast, uh, right? Uh, but uh, it's it's recommend it's recommendable to write the the, the or to stop or to pause the the video to take note because I think. Uh, it's not, it, it not possible for me to understand the, the, the complete phrase if I, I, I don't understand the, the, the last, for example, word or the first word. Yeah, that is a, a good thing. I mean, you can do that one. But the most important is that you first uh, check it with no captions, two or three times. Then okay. with captions, and yes, yeah, you can pause it, you can... Uh, check the pronunciation of the words, uh, check in the dictionary what is the meaning of the word, and then you are going to get the vocabulary for yourself. So that will be the best way. 
and, and it's mean I in a video I I need to 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 listen to one two three times the the necessary time to understand to understand the idea the general idea the general idea uh huh as yeah. I was telling you uh, you Is are going to quality? understand the uh huh yeah, first the idea. And yeah, then I try, the little uh, sometimes I try to to take a picture when, for example, this day is a, a lot of information about good presentation, but I try to, to take a picture with the intention to uh, to review in different, uh, when I have time, but it's not possible for me to uh, with a lot a lot of information but the main idea is important but to to have a a full conversation or a formal presentation i need to to have the enough enough word enough uh, vocabulary. vocabulary this is this is my 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 major necessity to have yeah, but if you do the exercise with the videos, you are going to get more vocabulary. You will see. And the most important, the most important exercise is to think only in English. When you are thinking for yourself, only in English, from the morning, when you're not speaking to anybody, that will be something that is going to help you a lot. Okay. But the 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 but seeing video is is re, is recommend recommendable. Yeah, definitely you can do that one. Uh, okay, okay, teacher. Very good. Perfect. I will. I will that. Definitely. So, yeah, that is going to help you a lot. And uh, remember that if you have questions, you can chat in the group or you can chat with me directly. And of course, yeah, I will help. Thank you. Thank you for your, 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 for, for your time. Yes. Yes. But I, I will do it. Yes. Sometimes I, 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 I ask, I ask you in the, in the chat, but when, there are questions. It's clear. <laughs> very good. Perfect. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was very good to be with you tonight. I hope you yeah, feel better. You. And see you tomorrow. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah, teacher. Thank you. Have a beautiful Bye. night. So do you. Bye-bye.